Hey guys, what's going on? It's Team Jing in Sim Racing here, and today I'm bringing you a brand new series called the Retro Sim Racer. Now, as many of you will know, I'm a massive PlayStation 1 collector and fan, and throughout history there's been plenty of racing games both to make and break my childhood. There have been third-party ones, and indeed official ones, which have both had their ups and downs, and it's my job in this series to bring you the very best and the very worst of the PlayStation 1 library in the racing and maybe overall genre. We'll see how this series goes. But for this episode, we're going to focus on one game in particular, and I cannot stand this game. Everything about it is awful. If there's one word to describe it, it's dreadful, and you're about to see why. So the game itself is Monaco Grand Prix Racing Simulation 2, and we go straight into the main menu and give you a little review. Now, the first thing I noticed about the menu screen was Edit Teams, so straight away you know that this is not going to be an official game. But what really disappointed me was the extent that they lowered to, to actually name the drivers and the teams as complete knockoffs, but you could see they were of the actual F1 drivers. So let's just go through the teams then. There's no official team names, they're just numbers, however you can rename them. And their liveries are probably the sickliest colours I've ever seen. You go from puke green to a blinding purple. If you're there's a beta knockoff McLaren there. And it's not exactly the most attractive car I'll ever see in the world. And the sponsors as well on the side pods of the car. One side, they're actually the right way around. says Tom. The other way around will say M-O-T and vice versa. So you'll see word saying one way backwards and then completely the opposite forwards. So a really bizarre way of sponsoring cars there. You know, it's almost like when you go into a, a Poundland shop and you see those knockoff Formula 1 remote control cars. And instead of uh, Marlboro, they've got like Marl Trend. Or some really weird, instead of Vodafone, there's always like Vodasonic or something like that. But here I'm just going through the liveries which you can choose on the cars. There's nothing too incredible really. You can see the drivers there which have no relevance to anything whatsoever. Or do they? We'll get onto that very shortly. So now I'm going to quickly go into a quick race. But what's that? That Darren Mill. So Darren Mill instead of Damon Hill. So it just gets worse out from here. You know, you've got evident rip-offs there. So Juan Testi, I'm assuming, instead of Juan Alesi. Maybe Johnny Herbert there. Um, that is the worst rip-off I've ever seen. Diego Veneers instead of Pedro Veneers. Really couldn't extend your imagination beyond that. Oh, it gets dreadful. These names are just awful. They could at least put some creativity into making them. That was obviously a Villeneuve uh, knockoff there. You've got Ted Wine, who has... Probably some guy from Devon who likes a bit of wine every now and again. Uh, Xander Burtz is the worst one. That's obviously Alexander Burtz. And you do not get much better than that. So if this was a sign of things to come, it would most probably be right. What you're seeing now is the track selection screen. You can see just how colourful and how eccentric this really is. That spreadsheet sort of listing really does entice you as the audience and really want you to play more and choose your track. They're not even track names, essentially. They're just country names and, well... It really is a sign to go out. So you can see their penalty no. So no penalty no. And that's surely going to improve this game. Now this is actually a kind of cool feature. Or it would be if it worked. A setup screen. You can add everything from brake bias to the gear ratios. Just about everything. Which is a really nice feature for a PlayStation 1 game. Again, if it worked. You recognise that screen if you're an avid Formula 1 fan from years ago. When they used to have the old classifications. Or you will recognise it if it wasn't completely ripped off and done appallingly. So the fonts are all wrong. I mean, you know, if you're going to do a knockoff, the idea is to do it better. What could the car models be like? So we're off the line here then at Monza. Everyone knows the first corner. It's a little bit tight, so I was expecting a few fireworks, considering in the intro it's actually a car that's uh, going upside down, going up Sunderbolt. So I thought, you know, maybe what's going to happen? Oh, wait, hang on. The corner's going to the left. I see. So this is the old layout, maybe. Or, oh, look at that. So you put one wheel on the grass and you immediately slow down. So that immediately is a big uh, gaming turn-off for me. It is the worst thing possible in a racing game. You can barely touch the grass and you're destined for doom. You're destined to lose about 10 positions. Well, I'll be inside here and successfully made the move. Now, what you're about to see is absolutely dreadful. Caught the apex and, oh, well, so I've not only lost 180 miles an hour in the space of two seconds, but also spun it on the spot in a gravel trap. Now, that is really simulation, quote-unquote. And I've gone off again there. That's just another idea of just how appalling the handling physics really are here and also when you actually turn the corner oh, and you can see the AI have no idea what they're doing at all they stay on your line and oh you're going to lose a position there because you slow down if you put one wheel off the track but when you turn the cars you could not turn them it's nearly impossible you hold the right all the way down and this is really bugging me so you go into the penalty well into the final corner and you get such a nice hip when you barely touch the grass look at that and you've already lost about 12 seconds Here's a slow-mo replay, just a wheel barely on the grass. 
and that's really going to cost you about 70 miles an hour. So I thought I'd give it the benefit of the doubt and try Monaco. I mean, after all, this is Monaco Grand Prix. Surely this must be the best looking track in the game, right? No, of course not. So already the car handles like awful coming off the line. You've got hold the D-pad all the way down to turn more than 20 degrees. That was my initial complaint of this. Into turn one, it's looking fairly nice. Bit of contact, nothing too major. And we begin the run up the hill. And already you can barely steer the car. It's atrocious. There's just no way you can steer the car. You're coming up the hill now. And you can already see a bit of glitch in there. Some lines of the hair can actually coming through the bottom of the screen. The track itself, I'm not going to lie, is horrendously ugly. If you compare this to games which are out at the time, like F197 by Cynosis, I think Toka was out at this time as well. Some quality racing games on the console. And just none of them, well, look appallingly as this. I mean, look how bad this is. So glitchy. You've got to jump over the curb to avoid contact with AIs which do not budge off of the racing line no matter what situation you put them in. Jesus Christ. So now going into the tunnel, and look at this. The tunnel roof is made of sand. I was not aware of this, so thanks for clearing that up. The Monaco tunnel is made of sand. So coming into the chicane, and a little bit of argy-bargy there, slamming the wall. To be expected, I suppose. The track itself is actually pretty accurate, I can't complain. But it just looks awful. It's like it was designed by a four-year-old. I mean, you've got advertisements there by Bic. And you might actually need a Bic, because you can probably draw a better layout than this on paper with your eyes closed. I mean, it looks okay, but... The graphics themselves for the time, I mean, I know this is PlayStation 1, but with games like Tokara, out, F197, the whole, well, the whole F1 series, really, uh, even Ridge Racer have better graphics, in my opinion. Gran Turismo, again, another classic, which looks, frankly, a lot better than this does. So into the final corner, and look at this, we've already taken some plummets, and oh, my wheels disappeared. And my pit engineer is so insightful there, and this was surely going to end my race. So I gave up. I thought, there's one thing I haven't tried, and that's the championship mode. And surely, if I put all the settings on simulation, this can only get better. This is where it's going to shine, right? This is where every Formula 1 game shines. The handling of the cars are perfection, and everything goes to plan, right? Of course not.